the next three weeks, Carfile looks at the huge off-roader market with full reports over the next two weeks on the new Frontier and Discovery. And this week, we quickly look at an overview of the other choices on the 4x4 market, starting with the huge new Nissan Patrol. Sold all around the world, the new Patrol aims to build on the success of the previous models. All versions of the new Patrol GR, the short wheelbase three-door and the long wheelbase five-door, offer more style and comfort. That big boy's toy, the 4x4, is the ultimate fashion accessory of the 90s. This year, over 100,000 of us will buy the outsized Tonka toy to pose around him. And Nissan are hoping that they'll grab a big slice of the action with the all-new Patrol GR. The new Patrol has a totally redesigned exterior and interior. You can seat up to seven of you in it if you want this time, and there's more space all round for passengers and driver. And there's 40% more luggage space. Noise levels are also lower, and it's packed with improved safety features and security. was first launched in 1951, Nissan have always put six-cylinder engines in the Patrol, and this model is no different. There's just one engine in the model range, a six-cylinder intercooled turbo diesel. It's a 2.8 and it's capable of 155 miles per hour. And I think this one needs to see a little bit more action. Sold all around the world, the new Patrol aims to build on the success of the previous models. All versions of the new Patrol GR, the short wheelbase three-door and the long wheelbase five-door, offer more style and comfort. Patrols do have a reputation for off-road rugg ruggedness. Have you kept this this time around with the new Patrol GR? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the Patrol is all about driving off-road, so it's vital that we keep the performance uh, on the dirt as, as strong as possible. What, what kind of features has it got this time? Well, it does have several new features. Um, for the first time, we have an intelligent ABS system, which means that it, it can work out what sort of surface the vehicle is driving on and adjust the way the ABS system works accordingly. And also, um, there's a differential lock on this vehicle, which means it can drive out of sticky situations more easily. And the ABS even works with that, which is excellent. So even off-road, you still have that extra control? That's right. So you're not going to get wheel lock. Um, the other thing we have is a detachable stabiliser bar at the back. Um, now, what this does is it gives you very stable on-road performance, so it reduces body roll. But off-road, you can detach that stabiliser bar and get much more axle articulation and much more traction and, uh, and more comfort inside the vehicle. We acknowledge that these vehicles are often used uh, on the road, as you say, more often. And we've emphasised a complete redesign on the interior. Um, these vehicles have much more passenger space, much more luggage space. Um, they're more comfortable. And there's also a great deal of equipment, climate control, um, sunroof, air conditioning, and these are very highly spec vehicles. So yeah, we think to drive on the road or every day, it's a, it's a very usable vehicle. The 4x4 of the 90s needs to be able to do far more than just tackle tough terrain with confidence. Very few owners actually ever take their vehicles off-road. They're far more of a fashion statement, and car buyers expect sophistication in their cars. 
So to be successful these days, a 4x4 needs to combine the rough off-road ruggedness with the luxury and comfort you'd expect in an executive car. If the Patrol's blend of ruggedness and refinement suits your shopping list, then it's on sale now. The price is starting at 21,900 for the three door and 28,900 for the five door. Come on, come on, come on, you can do it. Even Toyota admit that over a third of existing Land Cruiser owners hardly ever drive off-road. And I reckon the figure would be significantly higher if we adjusted it to take account of their definition of off-road. That's not to say it isn't a capable off-roader. It is, extremely. African plains, desert crossings, ice treks, expeditions of all sorts, no problem. It just happens that it's extremely good at taking the kids to school, all of them and all of their friends. Toyota first brought the Land Cruiser over here in 1975 and now four-wheel drive models account for nearly 15% of their car sales in the UK. The Land Cruiser has earned that crucial factor in any car, image, pose value, cachet. This latest edition is the biggest bruiser of all. It sits at the top of the Land Cruiser range and is very handy for frightening lorry drivers. With a name like Amazon, you know it's going to be big. But it's getting to grips with just how big that really boggles the mind. <laughs> these wheels look like they've been nicked off quarry trucks. The headlamps come off a cross-channel ferry, and these side steps are actually made from broken up bits of oil rig. But that's unfair, it makes it sound crude and clumsy. Which it isn't. Remarkably, all three and a half tons of it can lope along quite nicely, thank you. And that's helped by the choice of two engines. Not surprisingly, there's a V8 petrol. In this case, it's a 4.6 litre, 230 brake with about 430 odd Newton metres of torque available. And then, there's this. It's a 4.2 litre, straight six, 24 valve, intercooled turbo diesel. Yummy. But please, just because it's diesel, don't think wheezy old taxi or cheesy old oil burner. Think big beefy truck. Think, oh don't think at all, just listen. Because this thing sounds gorgeous. Oh God, I like a diesel. Once you've overcome the thing's initial hesitation to move at all, and it's not surprising it does because it's a bit like pulling away in a bungalow really, it actually lopes along quite nicely. Sure, it's very big and very heavy, but it's also very powerful, loaded with technology to make it all a bit easier, and undeniably very comfortable. The automatic gearbox is standard on the petrol and available as an option on the diesel. It comes with two modes that it automatically selects between depending upon your driving style at the time. And it also has various technical gizmos to make sure it dips the power in between changes, uh, which is a good idea because it's going to stop it throwing the powertrain into orbit with all that torque. With the diesel engine, 0 to 60 comes up in a pretty respectable 13.7 seconds, and in the V8, an unbelievable 10.7 seconds. The Land Cruiser's always been aimed at the luxury car sector, and this latest flagship is a blatant attempt to wrestle Johnny Jag and Boris Beamer from their Executive Express, and it has a price tag to match. Around £44,000 will be required, thank you sir and madam, if you want one of these, the top spec VX. Or you could go down market and settle for the GX at £36,790. That's a lot of money to pay for a 4x4 and a lot of money to pay for a car that doesn't have a luxury badge. But it does come with all the goodies. Air conditioning, electric seats, electric everything in fact. CD player, leather trim, the works. 
My only complaint is the dash, which to my mind isn't that of a £40,000 car. It's decidedly basic in its layout, but still probably superior to much of the competition in the off-road market. Should you decide you do want to take to the rough in over 40 grand's worth of car, there's no doubting the abilities of the Amazon. All that torque will get you out of as well as into trouble, and these things do have a reputation for being very capable off-road. The days when a cloth cap sturdy well is in a canvas roof with a pinnacle of off-roading sophistication are long gone, and the new generation of four-wheel drives uses very modern technology to leave certain antiquated products built in this country trailing miserably behind in the mud. High and low ratios are fitted, of course, with both automatic and manual gearboxes, and centre and rear diff locks are all standard. The MPV market has for some time been fighting to pull the rug from under the knobbly tyres of the 4x4s. Why, they say, have all that macho butch metalwork when you can have an MPV? Why? Well, for a start, this doesn't look like a van. And in this, if you decide you need to go off-road, you can. And another reason, this is huge. And not only do all seven passengers benefit from headrests and seat belts, but here's the good news, with all of them on board, there's still room for the luggage. Do that in an MPV. And in true TV tradition, I've saved the best till last height adjustable suspension. At the moment, it's sat down to make it nice and easy for me to get in and out. And in normal use, the system decides for itself, according to the terrain, what height to set it at. But here's the really good news. Should you, God forbid, find yourself in the supermarket car park park next to a larger 4x4 than yours, then you do have an option. Simply reach inside, hit the required button, and hey presto, You've got the biggest 4 before in the car park. Which is funny, because according to the current commercial for a certain diminutive French car, size matters. Hmm. After the break, we'll take to the road in the equally impressive Isuzu Trooper. It's big, it's bold, and it's all Asian. Hmm, there's something not quite right in that sentence, isn't there? Well, it may sound wrong, but it's a fact that it isn't the Yanks, but the Asian manufacturers that have cornered the market in the big, and I mean big, off-roaders. If King's Road Cruisers are not for you, then say hello to the Isuzu Trooper. This is serious size, and even its name makes me nervous. Now, the off-road market has been steadily growing for the past 10 years, and it's now incredibly varied. The purists who like their 4x4s war-torn, battered, and very muddy said the craze would never last, but it has. And now we're spot for choice when it comes to vehicles that let us see over hedges, or if the mood takes us, drive straight through them. And the trooper looks as though it would have no problems driving through a whole forest if it had to. The sheer size of this thing is incredible, it's absolutely immense. But the changes to the styling mean that it's also quite a handsome route. There are two versions of the new Trooper, a long and a short wheelbase. Each comes in a 3-litre diesel or a 3.5-litre petrol version, and there are also three trim levels. Prices range from £19,000 to 26 and a half. This is the long wheelbase 3-litre diesel duty, and it'll set you back £23.5 grand. Now, of the three trim levels that are on offer, the duty is the middle of the range, and I actually think that it's the best value. Along with the basics, you get some little extras thrown in. An electrics package, alloy wheels, a passenger airbag, remote central locking. And if your family demands it, you can even have a third row of seating fitted back here. Looking around the interior, I have to say that I found the Trooper's major flaw. It looks pretty miserable and old-fashioned. There's far too much horrible, cheap-looking plastic and the interior upholstery is just awful. 
But one thing I can't moan about is space. There's plenty of space for both the driver and the passengers, and the seats are very comfortable. But let's get back to the three-litre diesel that powers the trooper along, because this ain't any old diesel. It's a new development in diesel engines, known as the common rail diesel, and it's the first time it's been on sale in the UK. So what benefits will you feel? Well, it offers a more controlled and efficient combustion compared to the direct injection, which means you get plenty of torque, even in quite low revs, making the driving experience far more fun than in the diesels of old. Another new feature on the Trooper is shift on the fly. And here comes the science bit. It's all to do with the four-wheel drive system. When you're driving along normally, the power will go to the rear wheels. However, if the conditions change and you need the four-wheel drive capabilities, all you need to do is flick a switch and hey presto, you're in an off-road monster capable of tackling bogs and boulders with delight. But having that kind of ability off-road, of course, can mean problems when we get the vehicles onto the tarmac that they're normally driven on. They can hack it on the tough stuff all right, but they wallow and they wobble their way around the slightest sniff of a bend on a normal road. Not the Trooper. It now has a wider track, different springs and beefier anti-roll bars. It feels solid and steady with very strong direct steering. The new diesel power plant is quiet even at high speeds. This 3 litre has a top speed of 100 miles per hour. And fuel economy is also pretty good. Government figures show around 31.4 around town. For such a huge brute, the Trooper really is amazingly easy to drive. You very quickly feel confident and at home behind the wheel. I love its road presence. It really isn't as brash or as flash as some of the other off-roaders in the market. And I also love the fact that its size means you get a great view of everything that's going on around you. The only problem I found with that was the first time I tried to squeeze this thing into the tiniest of spaces at the supermarket. Still, you get used to that pretty quickly and there's plenty of space for the shopping. And the kids, and the dog, and yes, even the kitchen sink. Imagine a woman with all the style and elegance of Audrey Hepburn coupled with the obvious talents of Victoria Principal. Throw in a little of the muscle and power of the Ewing Corporation and well you've created a monster or the perfect woman. Well it's a little like what Mercedes are attempting to do here with the M-Class. They're trying to marry the traditional values of a Mercedes, build quality, refinement and style with the attributes of a sport utility vehicle, ruggedness, cargo room and ground clearance. A difficult challenge in anyone's book. And the fact that it's entirely built and assembled here in Alabama, and Mercedes have given themselves a tall order indeed. Oh, shut up. Here we go. This is it, the M-Class. This is the V6 3.2 model with three valves per cylinder and two spark plugs, which Mercedes say gives it very clean emissions. Well, as you can see, it's a very stylish car. It's got Mercedes written all over it, really. Well, it would do, wouldn't it? And um, it's quite a cumbersome big fella. Uh, got a big feeling, very big tyres, very wide. I could talk all day, but I'll tell you what, the temperature is into the high 90s now, and I'm very hot. And inside there is air conditioning. Hmm, guess where I'm going? I do hope you understand me getting back into the air-conditioned interior of the Mercedes. You see, I've been brought up on English winters, not Alabama summers, where climate control is leaving the window slightly ajar to get rid of the condensation. This 217 brake horsepower version of the M-Class gives adequate, if not excessive, pulling power. Remember, I'm still talking about the engine. Provided, of course, you want to go in a straight line. Mid-range torque is there, but it's not immediate. So if you want to overtake, then plan ahead. On some of Alabama's steeper hills, you might find yourself struggling for power. But as most of the roads are straight, like everywhere else in America, and you just need that 40 to 60 range, you'll find the M-Class more than adequate. The handling of the M-Class is rather predictable for a 4x4 made in America. In and out of corners, there is roll, but as I'm from Manchester, I'll just roll with it. The obvious danger with the concept of this car is that it'll end up being a jack of all trades, but a master of none. It's essentially trying to be several cars rolled into one. However, that's the car's best quality. It is a jack of all trades. 
I mean, if this car was called Jack, then it'd be a competent plumber, handy in the garden. In fact, very versatile all around the house. If you're a Mercedes fan, then you'll love the M-Class. It's Mercedes through and through. There's leather and walnut everywhere inside the cabin. Although I have to say, some parts of the plastic dash I um, find a bit tacky. But in terms of equipment, it's absolutely loaded. It's more loaded than Richard Branson the morning after he's won a rollover on the National Lottery. There's air conditioning, a brilliant stereo, loads of things. It's brilliant. But seriously, along with the air conditioning and integrated stereo, you do get the usual Mercedes level of specification. Electrical seats, electric windows, full leather interior, and all those airbags are standard. If Inspector Gadget had a car, he'd have an M-Class. And if all that wasn't enough, these seats are as comfortable as Jimmy Savile's armchair. With the elevated driving position, what the PR likes to call the commanding view position, you do feel safe in the M-Class. Visibility is very good, although the front pillars are slightly irritating, and the rear angular pillars seem unnecessarily large, creating possible blind spots. But safe you are. With front, passenger and side airbags, it means that if you do get involved in the wacky races, you're going to be in the equivalent of the executive bouncy castle. Well, the M-Class certainly feels like a Mercedes, but is it built like one? I went along to their new factory in Alabama to see for myself. And here it is, the brand new state-of-the-art Mercedes plant in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Inspired by BMW and Spartanburg, Mercedes have decided to base the whole of their M-Class operation here, using local labour and personnel, but Stuttgart design and work practices. Remember inside there are 1,450 team members with no captains or managers, it's the largest squad the Man United could ever manage. And remember, there are no executive dining facilities here and no executive car parking places. So, if you're an exec and thinking of working for Mercedes, I'd go somewhere else. All things considered, the M-Class performed well on and off-road, and it is great fun. So if you've got £32,000 to spend and want a refined sports utility vehicle, then my advice is certainly to give the M-Class a test drive. Could well bring a smile to your face. Next week, the 4x4 fun continues with the Vauxhall Frontera. That's next week on Carfile.